Very good morning, everybody. It's 10 o'clock Moscow time, and that means that it's time for us to start. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Yelena Bayerska, and I represent the project office of uh, the Open Doors Russian Scholarship Project. Um, a few words about our plan for today, for our today's webinar. First of all, the time of the webinar is approximately one hour, or about one hour, one hour plus. And uh, the program is as follows. So I will start with a brief presentation of the Open Doors Russian Scholarship Project, a uh, brief history of the project, and also I will focus on the stages, the rounds of uh, the competition, focusing on the first and the second round, and also the third one for a doctoral or PhD students. Uh, then I will go over and tell you a few words about the preparation for the test, and also some helpful bits and pieces for you uh, that you can take into account during the preparation and during the uh, process of your actual participation in the Olympiad. Um, and then I will give the floor to um, two uh, invited speakers representing two of the best Russian universities, two Moscow universities today, a Moscow State University of Civil Engineering, represented by Saleh Halimadet. Saleh, welcome once again. Um, nice to see you and hear uh, from you again. And Moscow Polytechnic University, represented by Anna Androv. And during this hour, my colleagues from the project office are there for you uh, in um, answering your questions in the meeting chat. Please, if you feel uh, you need some clarification or if you want to ask a question, please uh, send this question to the meeting chat and my colleagues and I will try and answer as many questions as we can. There's only one rule. Please keep in mind that the meeting chat is for questions only. So please do not share any personal data, any contact information in the meeting chat. The meeting chat is only for questions because it's a very good opportunity for all of us and for um, all the participants to exchange, uh, to answer questions, to ask questions and get responses. So once again, please use the meeting chat for questions only. Having said that, not to waste any more time, I'm going to um, share my presentation with you, share my screen, and hopefully you will see everything. Should be like that. <clears throat> yes, so I can see that I have shared my screen. All right, then I will start my slideshow, slideshow, and from the very beginning. Here we are. So the Open Doors Russian Scholarship Project and this year, 2024. So this project, the Open Doors, is organized and has been organized by the Association of Global Universities, uniting uh, virtually the best universities that Russia has. And uh, it's uh, been done in close collaboration with the government of the Russian Federation, represented by the Ministry of Science and Higher Education uh, of Russia, and Rosta Trudnichestva. So um, the uh, competition has been organized for seven years already. So it's a, I would say it's a long uh, history. Uh, and during this time, during these seven years, uh, very many, very many students, international students, virtually thousands of international students have taken part in the competition and students have gained the right uh, to study tuition free in Russia in one of the best Russian universities and one of the leading uh, universities of Russia. Um, so uh, why should you take part in the Open Doors? First of all, the whole uh, event is there for you to get the rights to a tuition-free education in one of the best universities uh, in Russia. And uh, very often we ask, uh, we are asked by participants of our webinar, what do uh, winners of the Open Doors get? So the scholarship that winners get covers all your education expenses. So everything pertaining to your studies, four years for the bachelors, 
five years for specialist, two years for the master's or three years, depending on the university. So the scholarship that you get as one of the winners uh, covers all your education expenses. On top of that, if you feel like um, you should uh, perfect your Russian language skills or uh, if you have decided to enroll in a program which you are interested in, but the program uh, is taught in Russian, then winners again have the right to study tuition free uh, one for one year and perfect your Russian language skills. Um, so if you need uh, some additional Russian language training, the scholarship covers uh, the training as well. Uh, then, of course, there's no participation fee in our intellectual competition. So everything is very convenient and, and free of charge. All stages of the um, competition are organized online. And that means that um, everything that you have to do is just to uh, find a very stable internet connection uh, with no interruptions uh, so that you could focus on uh, your participation and doing the test or, or focusing on the interview with your potential research supervisors. And of course, when you have won or after winning the Olympiad, you will enjoy uh, a very good education uh, in Russia, in one of the leading uh, universities of Russia, and also very vibrant student life, really uh, engaging, interesting student life uh, on campus and off campus. And of course, uh, as you will learn from the presentations, campuses of our universities are uh, equipped with everything that you may need and the accommodation fee is very, uh, very affordable. So a couple of words about the terminology. We use the word tracks and today uh, we're having this webinar for prospective masters and doctoral uh, PhD students. Uh, those who are planning to work on their first thesis and the novelty of this year, uh, the postdoctoral track for those who are planning to work on their second doctorate. Subject area, you may have met, you may have come across this term. Uh, a subject area is a set of degree programs which are united by the same theoretical basis. When it comes to winners, everything is quite clear and I've already commented on it. A very important term, a runner-up. Runner-up uh, is a person who also scored very high on the ranking list uh, of all the participants, but not high enough uh, to become one of the winners. But life is sometimes unpredictable and things happen. So um, one of the winners or several winners, for one reason or another, all of a sudden may decide not to come and study uh, in Russia. Then we have a vacancy and these vacancies are taken by runners up. So this is, um, in fact, an explanation of the term that uh, you may come across in the rules of participation on our website. Tracks, four tracks this year, bachelor's, master's, PhD, or doctoral and postdoctoral. Today, uh, we are welcoming participants who are planning to take part in the master's and doctoral PhD tracks. So there's only one requirement when it comes to both tracks um, uh, at, uh, at the initial stage. So um, a degree of higher education for the master's track, at least that of a bachelor, and should be obtained no later than the summer of 2025. And for the doctoral or PhD track, uh, a degree of higher education, at least that of a master or a specialist, because some countries still have this uh, degree, five-year specialist degree. All right, and uh, subject areas. Uh, here you can see this, the menu, I would say, of our subject area areas. There are 14 subject areas this year, and they are very varied. As you can see, the choice is rich. And once again, I'm telling you that uh, each of these subject area uh, um, areas uh, is just an umbrella term. And under each of these terms, you will find many, many, many um, degree programs. Uh, and the number of degree programs under this subject area uh, areas vary, uh, varies from university to university. A very important observation here that I would like to draw your attention to is the fact that actually you may choose to opt for a participation in two subject areas simultaneously. Um, maybe related subject areas, mainly not related. For instance, you may choose business and management and then economics and econometrics. 
because they're related and they, they are varied, uh, uh, in fact, but they're still related. Or, for instance, biology and biotechnology and then clinical medicine and public health. Uh, but that means in practice that you will have to um, actually to write two letters of motivation during the second stage and also take two tests uh, during the second stage um, of our competition. But ultimately, when you are lucky uh, to have become one of the winners, you will have to choose only one subject area and only one degree program that you would like to focus on, to specialize in, and you will get a scholarship for this uh, degree program of your choice. But theoretically speaking, it's possible to take part in uh, the competition under the umbrella terms of two subject areas. Stages of the open doors. So for the master's track, bachelor's and master's, we have two stages. And the first stage is a portfolio competition and the deadline is coming very soon. And the second stage is an online uh, test, a proctored test. Three stages for the PhD or doctoral track. First stage is the same. It's all about the, your portfolio. Second stage is also the same. <clears throat> it's an online test. And the third stage is different. Uh, which is uh, an online interview with your potential research supervisor or supervisors, because there are several uh, to choose from, and or your doctoral track managers. And also three stages for the post, uh, post-doctoral track, but I'm not going to comment on um, the requirements for the third stage uh, in the post-doctoral track. First stage, deadline for your portfolio submission is here on this slide. Time is flying, November the 20th, you still have time. Um, at this stage, you have um, an additional requirement for our participation, which is an entrance test. Uh, many of you have done this test, and uh, actually you have three attempts uh, to pass the, the test, and you can use all the three attempts, and only your best results will be taken into account. So everything is there for you to increase your chances of participation, of your participation uh, in the Open Doors competition, and also um, giving you more opportunities uh, to proceed from one stage to another. Duration one hour and there are 45 problems, uh, as you can see. Portfolio. Usually during each webinar, we have lots of questions pertaining to the structure of the portfolio, the requirements um, uh, for the portfolio, uh, and what the motivation letter is about. So the first formal requirement when it comes down to, to this structure of your portfolio is, of course, your certificate of education. And I said that um, I already explained a couple of minutes ago um, what the requirements are. Either the, uh, the certificate of education of um, for bachelor's is GCSE certificate for master's is your bachelor's certificate and for uh, PhD students that of a master or a specialist if you have specialist the specialist degree. Letter of motivation. There are no formal requirements when it comes down to uh, the structure of the letter of motivation or its length. Actually, you can use as many words as you can, as you need, but the main idea behind your letter of motivation is to explain your decision, to explain the rationale, to explain the reasons for taking part in the open doors competition, for choosing this or that subject area or one particular discipline, um, and also um, uh, try and be as convincing uh, as possible, uh, showing your interest in uh, the open doors and also in getting your degree in Russia. And the third se uh, section is achievements. And there, um, uh, the guiding principle is the more the better. So the more information about your academic performance, your academic achievements, your participation in intellectual competitions or in any competitions, actually, uh, the higher your score will be for this um, stage. The results of uh, stage number one will be published, as you can see, on the 2nd of December. Uh, all the results pertaining to your progress um, during uh, your participation in the Open Doors competition, um, will be um, you will be informed through your personal account. So per your personal account, the Open Doors personal account, is your sustainable, constant, communication channel through which you will get a lot of useful information uh, ranging from your results to all sorts of um, information notes and so on um, so forth. Second stage is uh, of the Olympiad is an online proctored test. Proctored, proctored test means that 
it's online, it's done online. And also <clears throat> you will have to uh, register once again and upload some identification documents for us to ensure your independent and fair completion of the test. The dates of testing you can see here in this slide, December the 5th, December the 7th, and uh, these are the main dates of testing. What you have to will have to do is to choose a suitable time slot uh, during these days when it's comfortable for you to take this test. If you have applied for two subject areas, still you will have to find two uh, comfortable time slots for you um, to take the test during the same day. Um, uh, a day is 24 hours. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, 24 hours. So that means that definitely you will find two um, available time slots for you to take the test. And the announcements of the results for uh, the master's track um, and those who will proceed to the third stage, to the third round for the doctoral track uh, the deadline uh, for uh, this uh, for the results uh, is 17th of January 2025. And of course, there's no need to jot down the dates because you will find all the dates uh, on our website. And I will show you where to look for the dates, where to look for some other important things that uh, you should keep in mind uh, when preparing or when taking part in the Olympiad. Third stage for, for the um, PhD students, for, for our doctoral students. So the idea behind the third stage is to assess your ability to do research, to uh, not so much, maybe not so much to, um, to study, uh, even though uh, we have lots of disciplines, uh, but uh, fewer disciplines compared to, say, master's or doctoral uh, programs, but still um, uh, theoretical disciplines, that's for sure. But the most important idea behind this stage is to check your ability to do research in the field that corresponds to uh, the research interests of your potential research supervisors. So the uh, list of pot potential supervisors to choose from uh, will be published later in November, but in November, definitely. And you will have to uh, have up to three interviews with uh, your potential research supervisors and postgraduate uh, or doctoral track managers. The duration of, of the interview, half an hour, and that's enough. Uh, to figure out whether your research interests uh, meet or coincide with those of your research supervisor. Uh, and of course, um, here are important dates. Um, the, uh, there's only one day uh, for your interviews, uh, January 29th, when um, all the interviews will be organized. And the most important date of all is the announcements of the winners of the Open Doors competition, February the 21st, 2025. So how to prepare? Uh, this is also uh, a very important question, very important issue. And I will probably show you, first of all, uh, our website that I strongly recommend you to, uh, to use uh, daily. Um, here, here is um, the menu. In the section about, you will find, uh, first of all, uh, all the info about the Open Doors uh, Russian Scholarship Project, one click to open all doors, but also you will find video recordings of all the webinars of all the universities, which we have had and we will still have. Uh, so please check the video recordings and the, the presentation of the universities just to make sure that your choice is the right one. The new section, I'm not going to comment to save time, rules. Under this section, you will find uh, a very detailed description of the rules of participation in the Open Doors um, uh, competition, virtually taking you step by step, and all the dates will be there too. Then, uh, of course, the schedule of the open doors if you click on the schedule you will get all the dates um uh, all the important dates that you have to uh, don't have to memorize you can always check and two very important sections the section which is called universities and the section which is called subjects if you go to universities look you will end up if you click on uh the universities uh, section the icon. You will have 24 icons of all universities uh, taking part in this year's Open Doors uh, competition. And if you click on the icon of each of the universities, this is just a screenshot. So you will end up uh, on the landing page of our university, of the university. You can check all universities one by one. 
all the websites are in many languages. Uh, all of them are definitely in two languages, in English and in Russian. And many universities have their websites, like one of our today's universities, in five languages. So everything is there for your convenience. So if you click on um, the icons, you will end up on the landing pages of our uh, organizing universities. And then what to look there for? Look, there, of course, under the title either education, or under the title admission, you will have a complete list of degree programs in English or in Russian. This is also a, um, a screenshot, but just to give you an idea how this, um, how the websites uh, might look like. So no need asking whether this university has this or that program, whether the program is in English or in Russian. Of course, you can do that during this webinar, but um, obviously we uh, cannot uh, remember all physically, uh, all, um, uh, all the education programs, uh, degree programs, menus of all the universities. But it's so easy to check if you check the websites. Look, here you have bachelor pro degree programs taught in Russian, bachelor degree programs taught in English, master degree programs programs in English in Russian, PhD programs in English and in Russian, residency training for, um, for medical students, special uh, specialist degree programs. So everything is there for you if you check uh, the websites of the university. And then under, I'm going back, under this section, subjects, you will have lots of useful materials. First of all, you will have um, programs or syllabi uh, for all, all, virtually all uh, subject areas, which are, you can download uh, those documents and each syllabus is uh, a very detailed description on the content, references, reading lists, online courses in English and in Russian. And also a demo test or sample test for each subject area uh, to give you uh, some idea what to expect during your second stage online test. And um, the tests um, include uh, problems of two levels, entry, intermediate, and advanced. And for each, uh, for each level, uh, for each task of each level, you will be given a different number of points. What happens then? Then all the scores for your first stage, for the second stage, and for PhD students, um, uh, your results of the third stage, everything is summed up and ranking lists of all participants are formed. And of course, uh, the winners are those who rank high, uh, the highest. And this is just a screenshot of um, the description uh, of the subject area. This is syllabus. That's how it looks. Uh, very detailed description. Topics, subtopics, names of laws, um, equations, and so on. And this is a screenshot of a typical test for engineering and technology. All right, and um, uh, this is a very important uh, address. Uh, as I said, you can uh, always ask questions, uh, uh, not only today during our webinar, uh, but also uh, during um, uh, your uh, preparation, because this is a, a web, uh, an email address of the project office, and you can always find um, this uh, communication channel and the web address, uh, the email address uh, under the support section on our website. Please don't hesitate to ask for clarification or ask a question if you feel you need some, um, some additional info. So having said that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I will join my colleagues um, from the project office and uh, I will um, now give the floor to uh, one, one of our um, invited speakers, Saleh uh, Almadet, uh, representing Moscow State University of Civil Engineering. And I know that during the previous webinars, we have lots of uh, pro uh, questions from our participants pertaining to degree programs in civil engineering, in architecture, in construction, and so on. So, Saleh, the floor is yours. Over to you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you again. Yeah, nice to meet you, Saleh. Thank everybody for this uh, opportunity to, to discuss our university. So please let me, uh, first of all, let me, let me, let me, let me. So I think you can see my screen, am I right? Yes, yeah, perfect, yes. 
Thank you. Okay, please uh, let me introduce uh, myself. My name is Tari Al Mawed. I'm uh, I'm producing my university, Moscow State University of Civil Engineering, National Research University. I'm working in the inter international department. So for any questions, you can just ask me. So let me start. Uh, brief facts on uh, Moscow State University of, of Civil Engineering. In our university, we have more than 15,000 uh, students, uh, including more than 1,200 international students. Here in our university, we have more than 1,000 scientific uh, and uh, pedagogical staff. We have many, many institutes, uh, like eight institutes, two uh, branches, 34 academic uh, shares, and 26 research departments. Um, our university located in the uh, north of uh, Moscow city, uh, located near to uh, the largest uh, park here in Moscow, called Vedenha, and we have near to our uh, university and our campus, we have one of the biggest uh, malls uh, called uh, uh, Europe, Euro, Europolis uh, Mall, and the nearest metro station is Vedenha, Babushkinskaya, and Petrinsky Sad. Um, here in uh, our uh, university's campus, we have uh, educational and scientific buildings, uh, administration uh, building, sports uh, cluster, and public uh, recreation space. Uh, our university had many uh, buildings and many, uh, I would say, like in fractures such as uh, athletics managed uh, ball scientific library and during room uh, for our students here we uh, in Moscow City University uh, we have many dorms there is one located in the north one in the south and one in the center of Moscow uh, that the fee for uh, these uh, for the dorm, so like around 2200 rubles uh, equal to 25 uh, US dollar for a budget student per month. Um, MGSU Sports Center, we have a um, uh, world-class indoor track, swimming pool, pre-modern gym hill, more than 40 sports selections for students to choose from. Uh, youth life. Here in our university, of course, we care about the uh, youth life. So we have um, many leading students organizations, uh, organizations such as um, curators, interclub, volunteers, student uh, council, student research uh, society, and student creative buria. About international activities. Uh, so, since we have many international students from more than 78 uh, countries around the world, we have um, many nationalities and we have many activities uh, during the year. Uh, students like asking for making many activities. We are, we are happy always to help them with that. So for activities, always ready to do different kinds of activities here in our university. Uh, tutor school, inter, uh, inter school, um, we have, uh, no, starting from the spring of 2022, the inter uh, school of tutor was open to help international students uh, adapt to the new world. We have two unique training programs, five tutor training uh, dream and more than 300 international students uh, mentorize. Speaking club, of course, we have another university speaking club, and this club helps uh, all students and many people to learn different kind of languages such as Russian, English, French, Arabic, Chinese, and French. 
uh, a large club class every week more than 800 people visit the club not only from the university from outside the university as well to uh, presenters teach uh, the class over 10 uh, board games at each seance admission to MGCO. um all uh, open door students who got the scholarship uh, gets um, uh, private, get a pri uh, private with one time payment of twenty five thousand rubles. It's, it's equal to two hundred eighty US dollar. Uh, preparatory course. Uh, we have like a foundation course for students who wants to apply to our university if someone wants to study in Russian language. So before during the Russian course, they will uh, do a preparatory course for one year, one year full time studies. And they will have, of course, Russian language, uh, mathematics, computer graphics, informatics, uh, fundamental of scientific research, uh, leadership and team management. Of course, the course will be for one year uh, after finishing the course, or you can choose the English program directly. So you can do um, English program uh, without doing the preparatory course, or you can do the preparatory course. And after that, can, you can choose the English program. Otherwise, you can do both programs. Uh, so for English programs, for the one who wants to do directly the English program without preparatory course or with preparatory course, we have um, um, civil engineering. We have uh, mathematics and computer modeling in civil engineering. We have uh, environmental engineering in construction. We have building buildings of energy uh, efficiency life cycle, uh, structural engineering, and we have development in investment and construction activities. So these programs for two year and two year only, full-time studies on campus. Um, but the good thing here that you can study and you can work at the same time because uh, master students, our master students, uh, their classes starts from uh, 6 p.m. So they will have enough time to find a job if they would like to to work a day and they can study and do uh, the homework and everything after starting from six o'clock. And of course, we have um, programs, of course, in Russian. We have many, many programs in Russian, such as architectures, urban planning, civil engineering, reconstruction, informatics and computer technology, uh, investment, economics, management, so we have many, 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 many programs in uh, Russian language. All, also, this, all these programs for two year and two year only, full time studying on campus and start from 6 p.m. The same thing, they can work in the morning and they can study at night, at evening. For PhD programs, of course, we don't have only master, we have, of course, PhD programs. Uh, there is two kinds of PhD programs, one for three years and one for four years. On this slide, we are showing you the programs for the one who wants to choose the three years program. Also full-time studies, also in the campus. We have like engineering, uh, uh, geology, geology, architectures, urban planning, fire safety, management, and on. And for the programs for four years, also, we have many programs such as structural mechanics, uh, material science, water supply, heat supply, foundation engineering, and uh, uh, underground faculties. Uh, here in our university, we have a unique opportunity to find a work after finishing the university because um, our university uh, works with many, many companies, Russian companies and international companies. And after finishing the studies, uh, it's easy to find a work because we care about our students. And uh, by this way, we're helping our students to find a work from different uh, with different uh, companies in different countries. 
research and practice. Of course, we have um, we help our students to do practice as well, because here in our university we have um, like a scientific and educational center for computer modeling of unique buildings. Uh, we can help them also to do research um, uh, research in the Institute of Building uh, Materials and Technologies. Uh, scientific and educational center, uh, geotechnics, uh, geotechnic and uh, research institute of experimental mechanism. Scientific and educational center, nano materials and nanotechnologies. Um, institute of integrate safety in construction. Uh, we have two types, like a library of fire testing and building materials and structures. So um, during the master degree or PhD programs, you can do practice here in our university. We have many buildings with all equipment needed for that. Uh, we uh, we all all the time happy to help our students to do practice and discover new uh, things here in our university. Uh, thank you for your time, and you can contact us by writing uh, directly to our email, and our and you can call us if you would like to. Thank you, thank you very much, Saleh, for your very detailed presentation. And I can see lots of questions to you uh, in in the meeting chat. But uh, mainly, I will ask you two questions, and then uh, I would like to ask you to skim through the meeting chat, and then mm -hmm. uh, after okay. Alina. Uh, is done with her presentation, um, uh, I will give the floor to you once again. So um, I can see that some participants asked us about uh, the monthly allowance or stipend uh, that universities pay to students. And I would like to once again tell you that we do not know the exact amount of the stipend or monthly allowance that our university pay to students because this uh, the amount varies from university to, uver to university. It's different. That's right. Yeah, but the question is whether uh, this uh, stipend is enough uh, for your university to cover accommodation, to pay for a student's dorm. Uh, one, one question. And second, once again, um, our participants asked uh, if uh, there is a chance of finding, uh, of having uh, a job on campus or off campus. But of I course. also, I would like to warn everybody that uh, if you do your research, it's very difficult to combine your studies and your job. But maybe Salik will tell us a bit more whether the, your monthly allowance or stipend is enough to cover accommodation costs um, that you, the university provides and also uh, comments on job opportunities on campus and off campus. Mm -hmm. So thank you uh, again. So for the first question, uh, unfortunately, uh, this amount of money, it's not enough for living here in Russia. Of course, you need to come here with your own money or you will ask your family to help you with that. Uh, at least you need to have plus $200 at least so you can live here in Moscow because life here in Moscow is a little bit expensive even if you are living in the dorm of the university. This is my first advice. Uh, finding a job. Of course, it's possible to find a job uh, because many students here, international students here in the university, they are doing research and they are working in the library. So they are working and studying in the same um, sphere, so in the same um, place, so they can do both at the same time. But this things not happened with everybody. So, of course, you can find a job, but it's not easy, and you can't find it directly. So, it's like around after, only after one year you can maybe you can find a job. So you need to like count about that. So you need to make sure that you ha you have enough money to live for one year and only after one year to search for a job. This is my advice for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saleh, for this practical advice. But uh, usually, usually this monthly allowance that you get from universities, of course, depending it's on the enough. academic. It's not enough. Yeah, it's not it, enough. But it's not, it, it is enough to cover, to pay for, for the accommodation. On it's, uh, it's enough to pay for your internet. It's enough to pay for your uh, dorm. It's enough to yes. pay for, for some stuff, but for... Yeah. For everything, of course not. Unfortunately. Yeah, sure. But the most important the question was whether it is enough to pay for the dorm for the students. For the dorm, of course, it's enough to pay yeah, for the sure. dorm. Yeah, sure. For the internet and for the dorm. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Yes, it's enough. 
Mm. Yeah, okay, very good. And then there are, of course, jo jo job opportunities. And thank you, Saleh, for explaining uh, to us in greater detail and giving advice uh, to our participants. Okay, and I would like you uh, to ask you once again to go through, uh, to skim through the, the meeting chat. Lots of questions uh, about your university. And it's my pleasure to give the floor to Alina Andrew, uh, representing another university, another Moscow university, Moscow State Polytechnic University. Alina, over to you now. Hello. Hello, dear friends. Hello, dear colleagues. Let me share my screen with you. Can I share my screen, please? Because now it's impossible. Yeah, if you click on share, share, yes, I'm clicking, and then I'm yeah, clicking. entire screen, and then we will see your presentation. Just a moment. Yes. А не получается у меня пока что. У вас uh -huh. презентация там есть, да? So if you have your present, yeah, now it's working. Okay, yeah, now perfect, very yes. good. Okay. Yes, thank you. okay, thank you. Dear friends, today it's a big honor for me to tell you about uh, our university, and don't hesitate to ask. Any questions today? I tell you about our educational opportunity, and I'm sure that uh, if you do choice for our university, it will be a big choice. It will be a really good choice that will open you good professional opportunities. And first, so let me tell you. Let me tell you about uh, history at our university in brief uh, form. Uh, just a moment. And our university, our university is a merger of six big universities that is uh, merged in year 2016. And uh, it means that you have a big choice of uh, uh, different educational opportunities. And uh, in uh, the year 2016, six Moscow universities were united, were merged, and new brand Moscow Polytechnic University appeared. And it means that we saved, we saved to go to the best traditions and implemented new approach for educational process. And uh, one of the features of our university is multidisciplinary approach. We combine training of engineers and artists and journalists, IT specialists and chemists. It means that we have almost all uh, educational areas at our universities and uh, of course uh, our universities as a merger of six big universities has everything in order to implement uh, education process on the best level and uh, you see figures yes let's uh, pay attention figures and statistics at our universities and you see that uh, we have more than 2,000 students at our university, and 10% are foreigners from 70 countries. And, uh, quite big, uh, quite big uh, figure, yeah. And it uh, highlights that uh, foreigners constantly choose our universities, and we provide uh, education service services on good level, giving our students all conditions in order they feel comfortable here and uh, a bit later I tell about opportunities that we provide for our international students because we pay specific attention and uh, implement a wide range of different events uh, for good socialization and adaptation process here at Russia at our Moscow Polytechnic Universities. And we provide, we provide our training for students in several global areas, uh, areas of studies, areas of educational field. It is uh, transport, engineer, logistics, urbanistics, art, technologies, IT, business, ecology, and technologies. Uh, there are a global demand uh, for multiple skills nowadays, and we develop new teaching methods that we are happy to share. 
Moscow Polytechnic University is a leading university in Russia in project-based training and education. Today, we train our students to work in a team while solve practical problems. From the first year of education, we teach students to work on real task um, projects with our industrial partners. It's very important to highlight because we have a wide range of industrial partners. You can ask why it's important because, because collaborating with our partners, we attract them for our educational process. It means that from the first year of studies, our students are involved in project with real industrial partners. We're a very big uh, organization in Russia. And after graduation of university, very often uh, gifted and talented students are offered jobs because you know the biggest problem is yes, the most important things when you graduate from university is of course to find a job and attracting our industrial partners and our educational problem we solve this uh, problem i think it's not uh, even a problem it's the goal of life yes to find a good job and of course we help to solve it uh, attracting good industrial partners and uh, they offer very good uh, good offers, job offers. And uh, now let me tell about STEAM education. Maybe some of you know what is STEAM education. We are implementing STEAM education at our university. STEAM education is uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And it cooperates the art component in all areas of our trains. It's also very interesting the feature of our universities not every university has that we have and we have our own art space uh, we uh, have our art space this art polytech it's uh, one of uh, whole of our art space in the slide and uh, it's very important to highlight that engineers also create arts technicians and engineering education that's why we open creative clusters. It's called Apple Tax, the place where engineers, designers, and artists can work together. And we held here different exhibitions. And uh, these exhibitions attend not only our students, but uh, students from another universities and uh, uh, people who are interested in different kinds of arts. And we hold these uh, temporary exhibitions regularly, and uh, they are different. Uh, approximately every month we change these missions and it has interest for many people. And also it's important to tell you that we prioritize well-being our students regularly and when you are our freshman, when you just came to our university, we well uh, organized a process for first year students in order to satisfy all your amounts, your all demands, and uh, your interest, uh, presenting opportunities for adaptation, solution, and implementing a wide range of different events in order you feel here really comfortable. Yes, we have a wide range of opportunities here, and uh, also we have different uh, opportunities for extracurricular activities. We have our speaking club and also we have inter uh, club for international students where students uh, from different countries are collaborate with each other and help to uh, in different problems we for students who just arrived here in moscow and uh, speaking about our scientific work we focus on creating products with high level of technological readiness on making practical improvements. We have five main areas of our research that develops electric vehicles, mechanical engineering, sensors, and optical electronics, industrial softwares, and control system. Recognizing by Russian government and uh, universities received special grant by Russian Ministry of Science and Higher Education for development uh, different programs. It's also important to highlight because only the best projects uh, are financed uh, by Russian government grants and we have different, uh, different projects that are financed. It means that we have really uh, well-qualified uh, faculty staff that manage to 
attract a uh, grant uh, for our project. And uh, I'll tell you now about our projects briefly because we have a lot of different uh, projects that are implemented in different faculties of our universities. As I mentioned, we have a lot of faculties, yes, a lot different areas. Uh, at our university, in spite of the fact that it's called Polytechnic, we have not only engineering specialties, but also another ones. And uh, telling about projects, uh, school trained by highly qualified engineers in the field of automotive mechatronics, automotive engineering, industrial design, and control system. And right now we have a wide range master degree programs and uh, PhD programs at our school. And of course, we will be happy to see you as our students at our university. And we also creating a design bureau based at our school. We are already working with the largest Russian machine manufacturers as our industrial farmers and solving problems in the field of reserve engineering. And uh, the transportation direction is one of our strong points. That's why we are rebuilding digital ecosystem to work with our partner. And I'll tell you a little about our current projects. We do projects not only cooperation with industry partners, uh, such as, for example, uh, our partners Afterdoor is it one of uh, important uh, Moscow Polytechnic partner. Afterdoor is the largest Russian car uh, assembler, and now they have plans to produce their own cars. And for us, uh, it's uh, good achievements to collaborate with uh, such big part like after door it's very uh, big crash uh, industry and uh, of course it gives opportunity for our students uh, as as already mentioned after graduate from university our students very often very often offered different job offers and it's very good for them of course and we also work uh, with other manager with uh, another major manufacturers. For example, we currently developing steering and baking system for Kamas company. Kamas is the largest truck producer of Russia. And also we've built a smart shuttle. It, it, we tested it for one year in Moscow, the biggest park, and it is really doing well. And uh, this year we finished a uh, hybrid racing prototype. And as you see, we have really good, really good uh, projects with big uh, partners, industrial partners. And also we have not only industrial partners. Here you can see electric bike MIG R2. It's uh, also a project of our, our university. And we're working on electric bikes too. We're developing it and engineering will have a good range of products and one of the model is broke as the high speed record. It's also important that this this uh, electric vehicle, yes, that was developed and engineered at our university broke the high speed record. We're really proud of this fact. It uh, was done at our university by our students. And as you see, we have really uh, important projects, not for universities, but in general, we have projects that broke uh, records at in, in Russia, yes, and nobody else can broke after, after it. And uh, also, let me tell not about uh, transport faculty, also if you worry about our new, the latest projects, we are creating experimental sample of millimental range radar which is collaborate and a leader in terms of resolution. And the main goal of this project to increase the resolution of low cost automatic sensor by programming. And uh, also research is digital car twins. And uh, as you see, we have uh, a big opportunities in scientific, in scientific uh, sphere in the scientific field. And of course, well qualified uh, faculty staff, very good professors. And of course, you will work with them writing your thesis. And I am sure that everybody can find a field of your scientific interest at our 
university and uh, also this slide you see you see a uh, research census of technologies and it's not it's of course just part of our project that we're implementing at our university and you see that a lot of uh, scientific interests can be faced with yours and uh, we implementing very interesting approach to uh, learning as you already told you we have project activity it means that you have not only theoretical uh, studies course but also practical oriented that is also important uh, in order to get all skills and opportunities for your future work and uh, i'd like also pay attention that we have not only industrial partners yes as already told you we have a lot of them but also it's important to highlight that we also have a lot of opportunities for uh, educational partners we have educational partners all around the world and means that our students can uh, go for internships somewhere abroad yes and also get experience from colleagues our colleagues that teach abroad some professors yes it's also important not to not only to uh, get knowledge uh, from one university, one country, but also share with another, yes, and get uh, get uh, some uh, knowledge from professors that teaching not in Russia, but also different countries and uh, different universities that we collaborate. Uh, nowadays, we currently we collaborate with more than 50 partners all around the world and means that currently our students are undergoing some internship abroad and speaking about uh, opportunities that uh, we provide accommodation uh, all students uh, when you come to Russia at Moscow Polytech University we provide you all necessary things yes you will uh, you will live in our dormitory mostly you need to pay approximately approximately two uh, of 3,000 uh, rubles, uh, depending on the type of uh, dormitory, and also you will get pocket money monthly, depending on your academic results. Dear friends, thank you so much for your attention. Here you see our contacts. Here you also see QR code for our website. You can see now do screenshot and then undergo this link. And there it is written about all our educational opportunities. Also, I share you our Telegram group. There we have uh, different opportunities also to know about our university. And of course, you can communicate with our foreign students. And of course, they will answer you in details about uh, educational process at our Moscow Polytech University. And uh, I'm really waiting for you at our university and I'm sure that here with us you will find the best opportunities and uh, will find the best professional perspectives. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much, Alina, for your very, a very detailed presentation, very interesting and impressive choice of education programs. I'm really impressed. And thank you for raising the question of, of accommodation, because it's still coming, whether this monthly allowance or, or stipend is enough to come uh, to cover accommodation. Thanks for clarifying, um, to, for giving answer to this question. And once again, to all our participants, uh, um, all the universities that we have had so far confirmed that the monthly uh, allowance, monthly stipend is enough to cover accommodation. The accommodation on campus is very, very affordable, as I said, very, very affordable. And uh, Alina has just confirmed that there's 2,000 to 3,000 uh, Russian rubles a month, uh, which is very little, and uh, it's enough, the monthly stipend is enough to cover your accommodation expenses on campus. Alina, thank you very much. Do you think you could uh, skim through the chat if there are questions about your university? And I will take some questions and then give the floor once again to Saleh and you for maybe two or three concluding words, or maybe you would like to still answer some of the questions from the meeting chat. Okay? All right. 
good. So um, there were questions pertaining to uh, language, languages, language certificates. Uh, when you register, when you upload your documents, there are no formal requirements uh, as to whether you should uh, have an IELTS or TOEFL or any other um, language test certificate uh, uh, with you and upload that. Because the language that you choose when registering and the language of your participation uh, in uh, the uh, Open Doors Russian Scholarship Project is an indirect confirmation of your proficiency uh, in uh, this or that in one of the two languages. So if you feel that you should upload, please do upload, but uh, there are no uh, formal requirements as to uh, language certificates. If you need to perfect your Russian language or learn Russian, then once again, having won the, the uh, Open Doors competition, uh, you have the right, as I said in my presentation, uh, to study uh, tuition free, to study for free, uh, perfect your Russian language skills uh, during one year and then enroll in a degree program of your choice, in the degree program of your choice. So uh, the scholarship covers one complementary year tuition of tuition free training of uh, Russian language. So I, I did answer the language question. Uh, then, of course, there was a question uh, whether you should have a research supervisor if you do uh, your doctoral research. You, if you're writing, if you're working on your uh, PhD thesis. Um, uh, in our system of education, a postgraduate education, we do have research supervisors. And uh, this is actually a very good thing. I used to be a doctoral student many years ago as well. And the role of your research supervisor is to help you, to assist you in planning your research design to discuss the topic, uh, the theme uh, of your thesis, to see if um, it's actual, if it is of interest uh, to uh, the research community, and actually guide you through the whole process, starting uh, with the choice of the topics for your thesis, uh, doing your research design, and taking you gradually step by step um, to the very end, to the process of the actual presentation of your research results. So um, I would say yes. So the, the presence of your research supervisor and the need to choose a research supervisor is not a need, it's a must, I would say. All right, so this was very, uh, very briefly from what I saw. Uh, if you want to, I, I, I can see that one question keeps coming about the badges. If you feel like uploading, please feel free to upload. But there are no, no formal requirements as to as to um, language certificates or any proof of your language proficiency. Because as I said, your language of participation and your language of uh, registration for your participation is an indirect um, proof of your proficiency. So that was that. And uh, Saleh, would you like to say something in conclusion and maybe some questions that uh, kept coming? Okay, maybe maybe not because uh, I could see that uh, Saleh did answer many questions already in in our meeting chat. Alina, would yes, you I'm like? Trying to, to, I'm trying. Oh to. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. So then you take the floor now if you want to say something. Okay. Uh, if, if is it possible, let me tell everybody uh, about our university. Our university uh, covers only how to say uh, civil engineering and everything. Uh, uh, connect to engineering buildings and building, building many bu no buildings, schools, uh, faculties, and and on. So we don't have medicine. We don't have uh, how to say it like uh, international uh, studies. We have only uh, architect, construction, management, economics, computer science, everything in construction. About finding a job, like what I said earlier, uh, it's possible to find a job. We always help our students to find a job. But in the first year, I think it's going to be a little bit impossible to find a job from the first year. So my advice to get ready, uh, so get ready to be studying for one year, only after finishing the first year, you will be able to do or to find a job only after one year. It's impossible to find a year. And my advice for everybody, if you want to choose Russian program or English program, my advice, of course, to do the preparatory course. This is my own advice. So it's not necessary. I'm just telling. 
because you will need the Russian language. Because the Russian language is a very important language. You will, uh, it will be helpful in the future. Believe me. It doesn't matter if you're going to stay in Russia or you want to, wear, uh, to work somewhere else. Uh, having a new language is a very good thing to, to get. You have a chance to do it for free. So my advice, of course, choose the Russian language. Well, thank you, Saleh. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I think so not. <laughs> All right. Very. I could not agree with you more. So you are absolutely right. And thank you for giving this uh, very practice-oriented, practical advice to all our certificates. Uh, and of course, Russian language uh, is uh, is uh, important. Uh, doesn't matter whether you stay in Russia and continue your education or you go and work abroad. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Alina, would you like to, to say something in conclusion or maybe take some of the questions? Yes, Helena, thank you so much. I also would like to point out uh, that it's possible, it's possible to learn Russian language, yes, because I, I see in chat that there are a lot of uh, questions about Russian language. And dear friends, don't hesitate to choose Russian language program, uh, especially at our university, because we have really good preparatory course. You will have you will have a lot of lecture first year. We'll have only Russian language, some additional uh subjects in order to be well prepared for your studies and it means that during one year we will teach you intensely Russian language you will have pro lectures per day of Russian like different aspects speaking grammar and uh, something like that also we have speaking club at our university we have every week for preparatory course students social events so we go in the museum by the way next week we go to museum with our students we celebrate all holidays with them in order to uh, show them how to celebrate it in Russian, yes, and share with all cultural aspects. It's very, very interesting uh, first year in Russia. And of course, of course, I highly advise you not, not uh, miss this opportunity and use it and choose Russian language program at Moscow Polytechnic University. Hope to see you at our university. Thank you so much for your comment and your interest because I see a lot of questions in chat. It's impossible to answer all for them. Thank you for such big interest. I really appreciate it. And, and of course, I hope that you will choose Russian University. And hope to see you all in Russia. Thank you. Elena, microphone выключен у вас? Yeah, maybe a couple of words. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alina. A couple of words um, in conclusion before we finish uh, our today's webinar. Uh, I was following the, the discussion uh, in the meeting chat, and there were lots of questions about the availability of degree programs. And, and as, as Sally said, please check the web pages of the universities. And I also uh, told you about a very good opportunity to, uh, to click on the icons of uh, 24 universities, of the 24 universities, on our web chat, and then, oh, oh, sorry, on our website. And then you will end up on the landing page of, this, uh, of that university. And there you will find a list of degree programs. So if you um, did not get uh, a reply, during our today's meeting, please go and check the websites of our universities. And under the section of uh, either education or admission, you will definitely have a list of all degree programs for uh, bachelor, master, uh, doctoral students, and even for postdocs. So do not miss this opportunity. Uh, and please use uh, the website of the Open Doors Russian Scholarship Project. And having said that, I would like to thank uh, our guests speakers, Aline and Saleh, for their presentation, for taking so much, so many questions, for giving practical advice uh, to all of our students, uh, for encouraging them to come and study and learn Russian in Russia. Uh, so thank you very much, very much thank indeed. You. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also thank I would like so to... Much. Yeah, thank you, Alina. Hope to see you again. And um, I would like to thank all participants. As Alina said, uh, I I was impressed and uh, still uh, I am impressed by the number of questions that uh, still keep coming to our chat. And we had more than 200 participants. And um, obviously, we could not physically answer all of them. Please 
you have our communication channel, you have uh, the web pages, uh, you have the web address and uh, the uh, email address of uh, the project office. And of course you have international offices and you have all the contacts in the presentations that you can find in the about section on our website. Do not use this opportunity and uh, search for the info on the website of the Open Doors and check the presentations of universities there. And so I would like to thank all participants um, for their interest. And I would like to wish everybody good luck uh, during all the stages uh, of the Open Doors competition. And I do hope to see many of you in Russia studying first Russian and then specializing in your uh, degree, um, in your uh, degree program, choosing, may maybe opting for continuing your education in Russia. So good luck with your academic endeavor. And last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues from the project office for helping me uh, in conducting this seminar and uh, answering so many of your questions. So thank you very much. Once again, good luck. And I hope to see you in Russia. Thank you.